Good morning and welcome to all of you. It's wonderful to see each Sunday by Sunday new uh, members return or old members returning to the new situation. So a special welcome to you back um, from online to here this morning. I need to say also a huge welcome to those who have joined us online. As you know, we have to still live stream because we haven't got enough room um, to accommodate everyone who may wish to be here today. Our church wardens will provide guidance during communion and when leaving the church. We welcome children attending socially distanced church in the West End. And today we have um, Chloe Starr, who is Professor of Theology in Yale, as well as a familiar member of our church, uh, taking the sermon to us today. So thank you very much, Chloe. I, I need to mention this before you sit down, or before, before we continue the service, rather, that um, I hope that you have been encouraged rather than than concerned about the publicity um, we have been getting in the past week. Let us begin and follow the order of service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us acknowledge that God is us here with us, and so we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Would you please sit? And we confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Will you stand? Let us praise God together, saying the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
and our prayer for today. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you sit and let us listen to the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Will you stand for the Gospel? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Sorry, don't worry. <laughs> Start again. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person. It is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offence 
when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile it. Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Great. 
brave at times of need. Mm. Joseph's skills in management and leadership, he does his maths, he travels across the land, so he the situation, and works out the best scientific evidence on ground and brain production. Government is a goldly occupation, or could be. <laughs> Joseph's ability to act for God in great matters stems from the strength of character. And it's notable in this story that it's in the really small things of life that he shows this. While he's in prison for resisting the temptation of Potiphar's wife, he helps out his fellow prisoners, including Pharaoh's great family brother, in whatever ways he can. And in this upside down world in which the three of them have been thrown into prison, it's the small kindnesses, like interpreting their dreams, that lead eventually to Joseph's release. He had every right to be bitter and uncooperative in jail. But his concern for others is evident. In our strange COVID days, it's a good reminder that small acts of goodness and kindness really do count. Mm. I'm struck this week by the news that Benny Tai, the Hong Kong law professor and Christian leader of the Umbrella Movement, has been dismissed from his job at Hong Kong University while he's awaiting the results of his appeal. I had a moving letter from Benny when he was in prison awaiting his trial last year and spoke of it as a sabbatical. He's one of those working for the rule of law in Hong Kong and willing to put his career and his life where his faith is. He's now crowdsourcing a salary for himself so he can carry on doing his constitutional law work. This kind of Christian action and self-sacrifice seems so very different from many putting their own interests first in our crisis. Mm. If Joseph continued to do good in small ways in prison, the second thing you might want to notice is his remarkable refusal to be bitter about the past or to hold his brother's sins against them because of his faith in God. Joseph doesn't give his brothers a free pass. He states clearly they're wrong to them. I am your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But he's both faithful and gracious in seeing their actions as part of a bigger picture. Come closer, he invites them as they cower up before him. And if it all sounds like sin, it was a little more complex for Joseph. He orchestrates and choreographs a series of tests for his brothers to see how they respond to who he now is. What brings him to tears and enables him to reveal himself to his brothers is the goodness of Reuben, who once tried to persuade the others not to kill him, and the willingness of his problematic older brother Judah to stand as hostage for Benjamin. Their good acts give Joseph the impetus to forgive his brothers for revealing himself to them. But what gives him the greatest strength is the belief that it was not really you who sent me here, but God. His faith in God's sovereign plan to save the nation enables him to come to terms with everything that's happened to him. The Joseph story should give us pause for thought in an era when lots of people are asking, why would a good God allow a pandemic to happen? Or where is God in all this? Joseph believed that God had a plan, and he rightly saw God at work in his life. But we need to weigh his understanding of sovereignty with one view through the lens of Christ. Joseph saw even his faith to know that it's the hand of God. We can believe that God is in charge without believing that God wills evil or harm. And we can believe that God works to bring good out of evil without seeing God as the cause of wrong. Mm. I've been reading Tom Wright's short book, God of the Pandemic, where he tackles these questions with characteristic clarity. In this little book, the Bishop of Durham, former bishop, dismisses people who would see God's punishment in recent events, or who would claim any clear sense of what God is saying through the pandemic. That's not the point, he says, whether in Job or in his unresolved questions, or in Jesus' response to tragedies, the Bible suggests that there are things we just don't know about causation. What matters is what we do and how we respond. When Jesus is asked about that natural disaster of the tower falling and killing 20 people, he doesn't look back to the hypothetical cause or look for something to ascribe blame, mm. but forward to what God will do. The Joseph story, which Tom notes, can be used to answer those who say it's your sin that caused this. Family mm. wasn't any more sin in Genesis in the narrative, and Joseph's clearly not responsible for his own downfall. The death and the destruction of COVID should be seen as a result of God's judgment, despite many who see it as a punishment for sin or a sign of the end time. But we don't have to go to the other extreme where we've got eco fascist hands that the earth itself is culling people to be found in the sacrifice. The human greed, African species, and habitat structure that are led to the disease and outbreak. 
right response, the tragedy that we get from looking at Jesus here. The first is a deep breath of what it means to say that God is in control. Jesus redefines for us what this means. God is not, as Tom argues, a medieval monarch directing every act and action of the people, and he's not a 18th century inventor with a machine. When Jesus faces death and loss at Lazarus' grave, he prays real tears and shares in human grief, mm. even though he knows God is sovereign. Sovereignty for Jesus is about healing and forgiveness, as in today's gospel, breaking the bread and dying on the cross for us. It's not about wielding a coercive power or an absolute authority. Mm. In Romans, Paul speaks of the broken creation that waits for the end of death and destruction. And he writes that God works with and through those who love him to bring all things to good. Our response then might be twofold, to ask what can we do practically to help those affected, to see where God is at work going forward, and to join in the poor in spirit and the mourners in being sent out to do God's work of bringing good to a bad situation, of working for a renewed creation. To play our part in working with God to bring about our inheritance, an earth filled with God's glory, or what Tom Wright calls the wise, rescuing, restorative rule of renewed, resurrected human beings. The other mainstay of our response will be lament, of lamenting or groaning wordlessly with the Spirit as we contemplate the tragedies unfolding across the world. Lament expresses our unknowing and our powerlessness but also our hope. Coronavirus is a time when we can see that we are, like Joseph, in exile. We're not in control. No. And it's time to fast, to pray, and to mourn for the wrong in our world, and to sit alongside God's Spirit and hold the world in silent prayer. On a weekend when we're commemorating the 75th anniversary of the end of war in the Pacific, this thought of lament Thank you so much, Chloe. There is indeed so much that we can draw on each passage and each story in the scriptures and reflect on what is happening in our lives even today. Let us stand. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you sit? Let us now pray for ourselves as well as for others. in our prayers of intercessions. In the past week, amidst our wish for an improvement to the threat of coronavirus and for levity in summertime, we have found ourselves tossed about. More parts of the country have gone into semi-lockdown. Holiday makers have had their holidays halted, with more countries affected by quarantine measures. 
There is a notable rise in infected people in several countries. In my native country of Singapore, a wave of dengue fever is causing concern alongside coronavirus. And one of our church family and PCC member, David Kinch, has died. So let us ask God to strengthen us, to fill us with hope as we pray in faith. Circle us, Lord. Circle our church with your light. May we understand more of our faith and why we believe. May we understand more of our doubt and trust your goodness despite it. May we commit ourselves to following you in the small details of our lives, especially at this particular time. Circle us, Lord. Keep light within. Keep darkness out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Circle us, Lord. Circle our nation with your whole being. Give to our national institutions, our government, health service, the law, the church. Give them insight into your nature of care, fairness, justice, kindness. And may the sheer generosity of your presence infuse our national life with hope and encouragement. Circle us, Lord. Keep hope within. Keep despair out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Circle us, Lord. Circle our family and our friends with your love. Keep them in peace and security. Guard those of our loved ones who are vulnerable. Strengthen those who are struggling. Encourage those who are on the brink of new things. In a moment of quiet, we name them our special people in our hearts before you. May the deep peace of your love circle them all. Keep love within. Keep danger out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Circle us, Lord. Circle the sick and the bereaved with your healing presence. There are some we know who are unwell, some who are fearful and some in pain, some who are at their last journey, and some whose hearts are aching in their grief. Circle them now, Lord. We name some aloud and others in our hearts. Helen, Jacob, Robert, Joanne. Circle them 
with your healing hands and comforting embrace. Keep peace within. Keep fear and desolation out. Circle us all and never let us slip from the wideness of your mercy and grace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you stand? In these times we are asked to share the peace from where we are. The peace of God be always with you. Please remain standing if you're able to. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Father, we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection. Send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Will you please sit? And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Everyone is welcome to receive communion in one form. The bread you will receive has been covered throughout the service. 
Please place your hand in front of you, palm upwards and cut. The bread will be placed on your palm without my touching it. I'm not permitted to speak during that time, and I will wear a mask as I minister communion. Please also come forward if you wish to receive a blessing. Again, I'm not permitted to speak, but I shall raise my hand above you or put it in front of you and administer a blessing. When you come forward, please follow um, the central aisle and keep your distance. But after you've received, please return by the side aisles. Because we are live streaming, some of you may be uncomfortable to be filmed. So please, if you do prefer, remain where you are, but standing, so that I know to come to you and administer communion where you are.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I dearly hope that you have felt God's loving presence in our worship here today. We will upload our live recording onto YouTube today so you can watch it and recall this time together. Some of you may know this, but most would not, that we were due a visit by ITV this morning, but at last minute they were diverted to Stanley because sadly there is a fresh outbreak of coronavirus there. Thank you once again, Chloe, for speaking to us from God's Word. And thank you to our church wardens, for Peter Dransfield, Christine and Brian for assisting in worship. No tea and coffee for hospitality is permitted yet, but hopefully this would be possible in a not-too-distant future. I'm told that singing may soon be permitted in a small way, and so we will take little steps forward while keeping safe. Thank you all for your faithfulness in worship and those also who have joined us online today. Join us here again next Sunday if you are able to, but there is no service here on the last Sunday in August because we are having an online animal blessing service and I hope that more of you respond to me with photographs and video clips of your animals. Um, Jeff, I'm conscious that we can't do a lot of moving around, but is there anything you wish to say about jazz on the green? <laughs> We're having jazz on the green, um, courtesy of the skills and, and friendships um, of our, our Bill Goida. And we really pray that um, today's weather will not be the weather that we have on the 30th, but glowing bright sunshine so that everyone enjoys a um, socially distanced picnic as well as that gorgeous music. Jazz on the green. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Lastly, to ease your exit from church, I shall exit via the chancel door and I'll, I might have to have an umbrella if it's raining to see you outside. Will you stand? The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and be with all whom you love this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.